go home now. Welcome back to Can I Go Home Now. Uh, Today is a red letter day on the podcast. We have my daddy. (laughs) <laughs> Dad, my father, he, uh, the CEO of a major public company. Why shouldn't trans people have access to health care? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought we would start the pod that way. No, but welcome. Welcome. Well, Time you were telling you were telling us. <laughs> I thought it'd be 50 minutes. Turns out it's 30 seconds. <laughs> you were telling us off camera, but why don't bring it on camera? Why shouldn't trans people be seen as real people? Uh, no, okay. But thank, thank <laughs> I you. I'm just nodding. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. <laughs> really sorry. I came. Go ahead. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have buttons too. So if you ever like. Oh, yeah, we do have soundboard buttons. This is the only one that matters. This that. one is an apology button. Okay. Yes. So it's, uh, it's a Jamie saying, I'd like to apologize to whoever I've hurt by saying that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Good if you that. ever say something that is, um, you know, not within the bounds of your professional. Persona. Jamie we all know- can apologize for me. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can use and in fact, voice. I'll apologize for what you've said off camera to us. <laughs> I want to apologize to everyone that I hurt by saying that. You're getting a call? It's Ashley. I totally thought that would be Strauss. Hi, sorry, I'm doing a pod record. Strauss's shareholders calling him. <laughs> Why the fuck are you doing <laughs> this podcast? Uh, this is live. Are you fucking serious? We just got wind of this. Okay. Absolutely <laughs> not. Do you mind um, sharing my don't tell? I would love you forever. He does this every time. (laughs) He gets interrupted during the podcast. I turn my phone. Sorry about that. (laughs) Um, uh, uh, We just don't really always have enough time for you, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) No, but I did just release a a set on "Don't Tell Comedy," and it's it's a bit of a distraction. Oh, go watch it! If you listen to the pod, you're gonna love it. Yeah, please go watch it, and then see me in San Diego. Just got the ticket counts in for San Diego, and oh, wow. (laughs) <laughs> and that is not a good sound that, that I was made. Good wow. No, that was a wow. It'll get better. Wow, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> I hope you enjoy coming to a show where mostly uh, there's empty seats there because that's how it's looking so far. Hello, 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 <laughs> San Diego. Um, right? But that's not why we have uh, my father Strauss on. Dad, um, a, a prolific father, <laughs> a father of three. <laughs> <A prolific father. laughs> you just can't stop making them. You stopped after three, but, uh, and a very, a very successful businessman. We've heard about my life through the context of your <laughs> earnings, but we haven't heard about your <laughs> life <laughs> through the context of you, you, how you earned all that money. Cause there's act it actually turns out that you were quite successful to earn all that money. It wasn't just, it didn't just appear in my bank account one day. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> took, took some work. In order for wow. my bank account to be flush, full of cash, a, a piggy bank that's about to explode, you had to go out and work very hard. <laughs> Is that r- I still do. Yeah. yeah most days, <laughs> except t- t- right now. Um, does yeah. being does being him being more, on this podcast is just yeah. someone shattering your piggy bank? Yeah. <laughs> Someone's Expensive. taking a hammer yeah. and putting coins. Took a while on. to get down here too. Where yeah. are we? <laughs> We're in deep, deep Bushwick. I, I, didn't I was even thinking know this place existed. Did you did you have a like a driver that brought you here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. you probably looked like John's landlord. Yes. You sh- showing up in a Mercedes, going up to the third floor his of a His landlord? Lockout. You think his landlord looks like your dad? You yeah. think his landlord is a superhero-like body? If you <laughs> Give me the rent, John. <laughs> now. I'll take the rent. Picking up the whole house. <laughs> Give it to me. Shaking the house out for coins. Well, it must be a safe neighborhood because the door was unlocked. Uh, <laughs> it actually it is a safe yeah. neighborhood. It is it's a, so it's safe, a... the lock's broken. Oh, God. <laughs> It's been broken so many times. There yeah, no it's so safe. I stuff. jammed the key in in a right. panic and Got broke it. it in. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I was in. followed. Yeah. Is this the shittiest place you've ever been in your no, whole life? Definitely. What's not. the shittiest place you've ever been? Uh, well, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> I've stayed in some really shitty hotels and motels. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Some really bad ones. Yeah. From like biking or like when you were younger? No, neither. Uh, I usually plan the vacations in our family, as you know, but once I made the mistake of um, letting your mom plan the vacation. Yeah. And uh, she booked us in um, St. Martin. Remember? Oh, Remember yeah, 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 yeah. Where's St. Martin? Uh, Martin? It's in the Caribbean, a, the Caribbean, John. The Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this, is, this was your first answer for shittiest place you've ever been on a Caribbean vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you had it. Well, you were there. It was pretty terrible, if you remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, like, if your whole life, like, had you ever been in, like, a hostel in Europe that was, like, oh, yeah, scary? but they weren't. No, the hostels I stayed in were actually great. There was one I stayed <laughs> in. Uh, there was one. There was a hostel back in those days. that had like guides, not like printed guides, and there were like guides for great hostels. 
And I remember there was one in, I think, uh, Italy that was known for its coffee and had actually really great coffee. All my hostel experiences were excellent. Wait, so why wow. was the St. Martin place so bad? Oh, because it was, well, it was like supposed to be a Caribbean, but like conceptually what Lucas just said, like <laughs> sounded very nice and fancy. Yeah. Palm trees and the like, but actually it was three small um, huts. Each hut was about um, <laughs> 10 by 10 <laughs> uh, feet. Oh. Uh, hut one was the, um, like the living area, which was a, it had a little camp stove, a uh, small television um, on a, uh, like, on a tray and a, like a couch like this size. This is for a family of five. <laughs> and uh, then two other huts with um, cots. There were actual cots with like thin sheets and oh. blankets. Did and, you stay um, the whole time? Um, we did. We actually oh. did stay the whole time. And it turns out we were like the guest cottages of the actual house. <laughs> and, um, and, but the tennis the actual court house of was... the actual house was on the place where we were staying. We weren't allowed to use the tennis court. So people um, would come and play but tennis. But they started playing at like 6.30 in, in the morning. So we're all trying to sleep on the thin cots with the thin sheets with, you know, the bed bugs. And you could hear people playing tennis at 6.30 in the morning. You hear Djokovic just like was, hitting his racket. It was on the not. Djokovic. Yeah. No, it wasn't, wasn't good. It's still it was really actually the worst Djokovic place. Because like, like, frankly, like cheap motels are actually pretty good. Like I just stayed. I was just doing a bike trip. And we stayed in the Hampton Inn. The Hampton Inn was incredible. Yeah, nice. yeah. You, we stayed in a uh, lot Hampton of Marriotts are, on the road. Hampton Inn was great. And then we well, stayed Hampton in, Inn's even worse than Marriott. But, Marriott's like middle of the then pack. Then we stayed in a place yeah, that hotels. was unbranded. I'm not going to say the name. That was pretty terrible. But even so, it was fine. Like a, just a local hotel. It was like run a by... local. It wasn't a hotel. It was on a good day. On a very good day, it was a motel. <laughs> a very good day. What about on a bad, bad day? Bad day, homeless shelter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Some kind of closer. crack house or you a, know, trap. It had that mildewy Maybe a trap. smell coming out of oh, the air conditioner. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 it's dirty. I know that all too well. Yeah, the floors are sagging. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of That's like what this, this house. Yeah. But I was doing this bike trip, so I had to like sleep there and then get up at three thirty in the morning and then ride one hundred and eighty-eight miles. So I did wow. need my sleep. In one I day, you went one hundred and eighty-eight miles. Two days, one hundred and eleven the first day. 77 the second day. Huh. Yeah, that's so really far. Is that why you're bigger this... than Zeus? <laughs> <laughs> is that why you look like you may control water and or lightning? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to give... Uh, this is what I think we should do. Is uh, I want to give a quick summary of your career. All you right. tell me if I'm correct. All right. So it's sort of a quiz. Slash it, so it's a, yeah, you can, but you correct me after the fact, and then we can pause. Oh, yeah, you want to go through the whole thing, then I have to go back and correct it? Yes. Okay. And then That's is this uninteresting? Tough to no, I'm gonna no, 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 it's not uninteresting. Well, it's interesting. It just might be easier if I'm he corrects already, you. I'm already, but let's do a quick Well, we, here's, here's what we did when <laughs> Mom was on. is we I did your meeting story, how you and Mom met, oh, yeah. and all the way to the proposal, and then she filled in all the things that were utterly untrue. Okay. Now, if I know your career far better then I know your and mom's love story. I think that's pretty on brand for where my values lie. <laughs> but, uh, okay, let's go. So, okay, so you go to Wesleyan University undergrad, same place as Jamie's older brother, which is where you met Jamie's older brother and became business partners with him. Now, business partners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get his career completely wrong. Uh, so you go to Wesleyan undergrad, you graduate second in your class, kind of makes you hungry for first. Um, you go straight... <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I thought I would get more out of you than that, and then you just looked at me blankly, and it felt bad. Uh, I like that you've set up a context where he can't respond, and then you're like yeah, throwing like, jabs at him as you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you dragged your pussy ass over to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got a JD MBA from Harvard. You graduated in like I want to say eighty one, eighty two. Um, so the early. But go. Okay. The early 80s. You graduate at the age of 26. This is, this is, by the way, this is the age where, as a white man, the only thing you have to do to become a CEO is make sure you're harassing women regularly enough. So, in, <laughs> in, in you're 26, you graduate Harvard, you go to, um, I want to say, Columbia Pictures, where you're hired as a director of distribution and shortly promoted to VP of distribution. Hold on. This is immediately after graduating? Yes. Yeah. He's hired as a director, wow. and that's okay. important because of his ra no, no, not because of his race and gender. I think because in that age, if you were a straight white dude with a Harvard JD MBA, straight out of undergrad, and all the accolades academically you had earned, that's pretty good. It was, it was very good. Yeah, that was good. 
Okay, yeah. so that's I mean, a second in your good class, start, but it's that's pretty. Good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. I wonder what first did. So, so was, was Biden Columbia first? Pictures no, Biden's like a hundred years older than Loves a silver you. medalist. It looks like, and uh, <laughs> so, they, so they Columbia Pictures as always number two. <laughs> so they, so it's no fiftieth at MSUM Minnesota State University <laughs> or Ed, but it's something. So Were you fiftieth in your class? No, I don't. I oh, didn't okay. count. It just goes on and on. There's people before me and no one after. Unfortunately, me. the school itself doesn't know how to count so <laughs> at minnesota minnesota state university they haven't learned accounting yet so they can't rank the class. john graduated as <laughs> from msu which john, it starts with an a so that's good john graduated with a master's in corn and confederate statues so uh but okay so um okay so you go you get hired from there to a, a no longer existent film distribution company called vestron as the Senior vice, the senior vice president. You know of, the titles also. I'm really impressed. Of distribution, of distribution. I no, think. Corporate no, corporate development. Okay, of corporate development. Sorry, corp dev. Then from there, you're promoted <laughs> to president. EVP, then president. EVP, then president. Then from there, you're poached by 20th Century Fox, and this is kind of like this is your first like big. You get hired as the president's COO of 20th Century Fox as a 32 year old. Yep. Now, 30 by the way, watching John watch this, it's like watching uh, a kid when they're like three years old and you're going, is he ready to go to B-E-D? <laughs> and the kid's watching like, what does this mean for me? Well, you said EVP and I was like, Executive that, vice president. Eh, vice president. <laughs> the eh, vice yeah. president. Eh, he's vice president. It was yeah. a very Jewish company. So EVP yeah. was and the, the same as VP. It was, eh, <laughs> vice president. And uh, this was a 32 year olds now, interestingly, wear Carhartt, get patchwork tattoos, and sleep with women until they get gonorrhea. But back then, 32 year olds <laughs> were the president and CEO of 20th Century Fox. You're there, I want to say, for four years from. Are roughly ninety to ninety four, uh, eighty nine to ninety three. Okay, wow, I'm, you're I'm really, really close. close here. Very close. You go to a video game startup in Northern California called Crystal Dynamics, where you're the CEO. Yep. You mm -hmm. uh, work there for not too long. I want to say two years. Two years. I was gonna say two and a half, but mm -hmm. two years. And then you go from there. You become uh, the CEO of. North American, you become the CEO of BMG, Bertelsmann Mu Music Group, which is a North American group of Bertelsmann, which is a big German media company. Um, no qualms with the very, very problematic Holocaust-ridden history <laughs> of Bertelsmann. In fact, I remember when he got his title, he, they also sent him an armband, and he wore it <laughs> so proudly. One arm, he had to wear the swastika to show his allegiance to the company, and then obviously the other was a yellow star of David to identify himself as a Jew. And BMG. It, and, it, and that balances out. It's neutral. Yes. It's like nothing <laughs> it's on neutral. either. Wow. He was the CEO of BMG, which stands for Bertelsmann Music Group, but he also was a BMG, a big money guy at this point, because <laughs> they paid you a lot of money. You moved to New York. You were in L.A. Yeah. Well, you had moved to Atherton for Crystal Dynamics, and then you moved from Atherton. What's to, Atherton? That's a very nice suburb in Northern California near Stanford. Actually, near Palo Alto? Yeah. yeah. What? Adjacent. It basically you live there. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. sucks. It sucks. We can talk about that. Palo Your Alto? Or... Really? Yeah. W were you alive in that moment? Your mom liked it. No. Sounds like a diss until it's just your, <laughs> until it's your actual until your dad. dad's just <laughs> actually <laughs> saying yeah, that is. Like <laughs> your mom <laughs> liked it. Okay. But she also set up that Caribbean <laughs> trip. So no, no, she, she did. I mean, also, Atherton. Yeah. You could point though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you lived in three huts in Atherton <laughs> with a tennis court on the property you couldn't access. Um, then you went from so you spent oh gosh you spent a lot of time at BMG because you would have been there from probably ninety six to oh one when you started until two thousand. Okay, till 2000, so, so four you, years. So you grew up in years. Atherton? No. No, he wasn't even born. He was there in 95. I was born in 95. No, he was at BMG. They moved oh. him to New York. Oh, okay. They got him a nice townhouse. They were paying for us to grow up in a very fancy little townhouse, big townhouse on the upper <laughs> side. Big <laughs> And uh, then you started your own company, Zelnick Media Capital, now Zelnick Media Capital, at the time Zelnick Media. What kind of company? Actually, this is a kind of a funny story. He once told me, because you rebranded the kind this is going to be a little making fun of you, but That's he okay. he rebranded re the company from Zelnick Media to Zelnick Media Capital to make it more institutional because it would go by ZMC. So it would basically be pulling his name off the door to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And you said it, it takes a leader with a lot of humility 
to pull their name off the door. And I was like, yeah. And, it, <laughs> and a great sign of humility is bragging about how much humility. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. That is actually a really good point. But I was, I was doing a life lesson with you, not like it wasn't like a public facing <laughs> yeah. statement. You guys were fishing. You were not normally it's, like that. It's so many of the yeah. lessons you didn't listen to you guys uh, were over the years. But like yeah. that wouldn't be something you would say. Like, yeah, in a you know, keynote a podcast, speech. unless no one's listening to the podcast. So. In which case, <laughs> <laughs> in which but, case you're on. Can I go home now? Yeah, today? Uh, I got it. <laughs> um, okay, you start your own company. The company, it, the goal, it's a private equity firm. You raise money. You buy, usually, well, not distressed media businesses, but media businesses that can be better run. Uh, you run them better, and then ultimately you sell them. And uh, you've done that with a bunch of companies. You t you took over. Take Two Interactive, which is sort of unusual in, I want to say, 07. Yep. And you became the CEO in 08? No, 11. 11. I was a chairman you were until then. Chairman. Um, so now you have, now you're the CEO of this video game company that owns Rockstar Games and 2K Sports. You are the, uh, the partner and founder of Zelnick Media Capital, ZMC. And then you have another business called Bellsberg and Company. Uh, which is a, what is that it's a family office where we took um, my mommy's daddy's money and we, <laughs> we we mixed it with my daddy's money and then we hired a lot of people to sh shake it around and to make, make it even more and make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but now I think you've at, you're kind of at the point where it's sort of the money makes the money I still have to work pretty hard no I'm not saying you don't work hard but I'm saying if you stopped working you'd be fine uh, it depends what you mean by fine? No, probably not. Unable to drink the blood of young children and fly <laughs> privately everywhere. <laughs> I guess that doesn't sound fine. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so that was my summary. That not bad. Very good. Oh. Um, what I I am curious, and if you guys have questions, I have a lot of in. questions. But, but I am curious what it was like, because I'm 28. And I'm not almost the age your dad was when he was a CEO. <laughs> that's, well, that's the thing is like, I'm not like entirely unsuccessful, but we are in a very hot, dirty podcast studio in Bushwick. <laughs> and I can't help but feel like 32 is like very soon within my eye line. Yeah. What did it feel like to be 32 and the president of a movie mm. studio back when movies were something that people watched? Yeah, they were a big deal then. It was still yeah. a very, it was a big, big, yeah. it was the most important part of the entertainment business which is what the video game business is now. It was, um, I mean, it was very cool and very scary. It was both. Like, I didn't, I definitely didn't feel uh, like I deserved to have that job at that age. I was really grateful that I did. And um, it was very exciting. And um, also, you know, at times terrifying. How did it, how but did mostly it happen? I, like, I was able to, like, I, I had enough confidence to feel like I could do the, the job, um, but it, but it's not like I felt like, oh, yeah, this is, I mean, I belong here or anything like that. Wait, when did you switch to video games? Uh, when, uh, four years later. So I was, at, I was in the movie business for a total of seven years. So after I was president of Fox for four years, I left to go to the video game business. Was, was there something that was you saw? Which was a very saw? small business in those days. Was there like a, like a trend you saw and you're like, I got to get yeah, it? Yeah, I thought it would be the next huge entertainment business. And fortunately for him, I was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I have nice things. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if my dad hadn't had the foresight to know that video games were the next big thing, I might actually have to work <laughs> at anything no, ever he, he one does, time. He if he work. didn't switch over to video games, that'd be a phone. But I did. I mean, I, <laughs> that'd I, be my phone. I knew that I had, I had the presence of mind to know that the movie business would be today what it is today, and the presence of mind to know that the video game business would be what it is today. And I mean, I had no way of knowing if I was right, um, but I did believe that. Yeah. And it was a very unpopular. Why did you believe movies you think would that? be in the, going in down the 90s? This is in the 90s, this right? Is 93. That, um, that's so when it was like the biggest thing ever. Well, this was, is, keep in mind, this is eight years before 9 11, so it wasn't even really a plan. You yet. try. You try. <laughs> Sorry, I, I try and keep track of years in terms of 9 11. Okay, got it. Uh, <laughs> okay, got yeah. it. Uh, so, uh, how did I know? I mean, of course, I didn't know. I just had, had the idea. It wasn't like the business was nowhere, by the way. The video game business had been around for 15 years. What was like the big game when you switched over? Uh, the big game that we made uh, the two big games initially were Crash and Burn and Total Eclipse, which no one here would remember. And the, uh, Crystal went on to make you know Tomb Raider and lots of other great games. But that was after I left. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know any of those. But Crystal games. turned into a big, successful studio. 
And now this is sort of a digression, but because you're in the video game business, it's kind of interesting. I wonder what your life would be like had you stayed in the movie business. But in the video game business... Or your life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess we're inextricably yeah, you'd linked. Be, uh, yep, you'd be in the analyst program at J.P. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> and right about now, let's see, uh, you would have done your fourth model of the day and uh, staring at midnight. Uh, yeah. I feel like this and you'd would be, be in the prison same, with though. Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> but Definitely not. And by the way, I knew him in those days. So yeah, he was, he was a, a pig, you said, always. Um, well, I, you know, I'm not going to say anything. Harvey bad. Weinstein. You're not going to say pig? anything bad about Harvey Weinstein I'm on this podcast. I'm not going to say anything bad about anyone, but Wait, I did know. Harvey him. Weinstein was a pig in those days. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say anything <laughs> about gonna... anyone. <laughs> Certainly not. Wait, him. you're not. Get... Wait, I'm confused as to why you wouldn't talk shit on a guy that's uh, the legal system has Have talked to me. I don't. I don't say negative things about anyone. I mean, really, I have to be hard pressed. How about Hitler? Let's do Hitler. <laughs> can we, I'm yeah, not really. a fan. I'm not a fan. Okay, okay, okay. okay. That's the <laughs> softest <laughs> possible thing you could say. <laughs> yeah, not I a just fan. I just wasn't a fan of how he, he was, went about <laughs> it. He, he was he was just confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not apologizing for Hitler. But what is it? How did we get onto the Holocaust? <laughs> <laughs> that's like a disastrous thing to do publicly. Yeah. yeah well, this, this is, is the stupid. first time we've I went on apologize to everyone that I heard that's not saying that. Well, yes, you're very well press trained, and this is pretty much anyone's nightmare who works in PR. Because we say things each episode. We had your nephew, I believe, and Lucas's cousin on, yeah. and his PR team had us take it down immediately once we Within posted 24 it. Within like, 24 hours, we have a PR team. Yes. Yeah, he. Hi I think he hired a PR or so team. He's, I mean, yeah, you okay. you know him. Yeah. I would I Certainly. would refrain from talking shit about him on this podcast, but he won't listen to anything unless it involves him. So Eli, <laughs> but it does involve him suck my directly. balls. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, it's getting worse. Okay, wait, wait. So okay, th but this is what this I wanted to say. I mean, by it. the way, the <laughs> in page six tomorrow, Strauss Zelnick, CEO of Take Two, stands idly by <laughs> as his nephew is insulted. <laughs> stands idly by as Hitler is praised on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ref Zelnick refuses to excoriate disgraced media mogul <laughs> Harvey Weinstein in a in a flagrant show of support for for Weinstein. <laughs> Okay, so, so so here's here's something interesting. Um, because you work in video games, and because the people who play video games at the most intense levels are artist. Uh, sorry, I was about to say. Wait, artistic, wait, wait! No, no, Autistic no. incels. No. Are what? you going here right now? What? what I want to ask your dad some questions. No, no, I just want to say something separate. I'm not even going to ask a question. Okay, okay. But it's funny because you get trolls sometimes. I do. Because I have a lot of trolls. You get like people that are like really <laughs> angry, autistic <laughs> incels. And one time... I wouldn't use that word to describe them for so many reasons. but <laughs> Mostly because you make most of your money off of freaks like that. <laughs> no, I do not. So. <laughs> you wouldn't describe those autistic freaks in that I way. I would not use <laughs> yeah. any of those words. Yes. Okay. So and that's why when we've you're posting on my Instagram feed, he said it, not me. <laughs> yes, he <laughs> thinks you're amazing consumers who yeah, happen to be great. very. If it angry. makes you feel any better, that's our listeners. Yeah, so, right. but then I love we you all. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this uh, is a video game. Half of our In listeners. order to be other listening half to like an underground Lucas's comedy podcast, fans. you either have to be a Jewish girl that thinks she has a chance of fucking me. Yeah, and you do. So keep listening. <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> utterly <laughs> autistic. Shout out our biggest. By fan, the way, the Tommy twenty dollar tier gets you a five percent greater chance of fucking Lucas. Yes. That's 10% off on my response time to your DM. That's $5 a month, <laughs> and you'll get a free copy of uh, GTA 6, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. GTA Is 6. GTA 6 in the works? I just don't even know where to start with your questions. Uh, and then I want to finish my anecdote. Are you afraid it's of funny. death? What are you guys <laughs> I'm not afraid of death. And uh, Rockstar, oh. Rockstar is working on the, uh, the next iteration in the Grand Theft Auto it, Do you think it's because when death comes to your door, you'll be able to strangle it to death with your bare hands? <laughs> strangle it to itself? When death comes at your door, you'll sling copies of GTA 6 at it, and then it will get distracted and no start playing. No worrying about something you can't control. Yeah. That's, that's, good, yeah, that's, that's I actually do have a question. One. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. I want to finish this anecdote. No, no, you no, go. Yeah. We always come John off, so I want. Ahead, John. You're out. more interested. So I have two. I have two. First one: Have you always been strong? <laughs> always been strong? <laughs> yeah. No. No, no, I was not. So when did you get Such strong? Uh, I started getting strong in my 20s. I was not strong. By the way, <laughs> if if you don't know who my dad is, look him up. Strauss Zelnick. Strauss is spelled S T R A U S S. He looks like some sort of. How would you describe my dad's Zeus. body? Zeus is literally, that's how I would describe <laughs> yeah. when it. I saw, when I saw you at the pool and yes. you're standing there without a shirt on, it would make sense if you had a spear in your head. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I would describe you. I you were a little surprised, actually. I remember. I was yeah. like kind he of. He was a little shocked. He was like, which what, is what's weird. going on here? When you I went wouldn't for a refer handshake. to anybody's abs this way, but some people online have referred to them as cum gutters. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. If you want to know what he looks yeah, like yeah. without a shirt on, I was scared to shake his hand for say, for my hand. Well, you've been <laughs> on the co- the cover of a bunch of fitness magazines, Just correct? One. Just one. Oh, okay. Well, Google you've that cover and you'll see men's fitness. you'll see what we're no, talking about. No, but you have about. been in men's I've been health. in men's health, but I yeah. haven't been on the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but Google... Strauss yeah. Zelnick shirtless. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're come up. <laughs> and you kinda, come up. You kind of are like Forrest Gump in a way if he was like really smart because you bike so, so far. Yeah, you, I mean, you've not, done all these things. Yes. And you're a war hero. <laughs> <laughs> you're a war. And you served in Vietnam. That's actually, I'm a war hero. Where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? All right, we'll good. No one I love how all of John's <laughs> references are so folksy. Yeah. <laughs> I like keeping it broad. Yeah. Wait, you do know? you have another Open question? Yeah, you have another question. All right, so you're very, you've, <laughs> you, you got strong at 20 20s, something. Yeah. So were Wait. you scared of things before that? Because I always feel like if I ever got strong, I wouldn't be scared of things. Uh, <laughs> well, I... <laughs> Scared of like physical things? Yeah, just walking by people. I tend not to be scared of those physical things because I feel like. Well, not anymore. Well, even then, I feel like if you're. You know, why pick on me? Like, as opposed to someone who's like. Wouldn't you pick on someone who looks a little less likely to defend themselves? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what Absolutely. I'm saying now, I'm but like before like, then. I'm also inside a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. I'm not like, walk, what is this walking on the street yeah. thing you're mentioning? Yeah. I suppose this I really neighborhood isn't. That. I there's guess like, if you want to pick on my there's dad like, and you're There's working... like two tons of steel, polished steel in between <laughs> me and that person. Glass, if you're I, working yeah. ground yeah. control <laughs> outside of his G5, yeah. you may be able to punch the window, but you may not. all that worried about it. With But it would hurt your hand. I got it. Okay. So you never get Chinese food at midnight at the place right across the street. No, I have it delivered. But like oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you don't get you your do Chinese, Chinese food delivered? Food. Uh, no, it's very close, and I don't I mean, know doors the open. They could drop it right off. <laughs> they, could, they could drop it right <laughs> off. Uh, they have uh, people have definitely come in this building before. I have no and, doubt, but uh, they probably didn't have Chinese food. They did not have Chinese food. But then they, had, they, they walked in here, they in saw their... the bathroom, they immediately left. <laughs> yes, they had meth in their system. They saw my bathroom and they said, They're "I like, want to go do meth worse. in a public bathroom." Exactly. Where I, I want it's cleaner. I would prefer to go to a crack house than <laughs> come and use a bathroom. where I might not be breathing in. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, fire. Yeah. Okay, then walking so... in, seeing the podcast studio, <sighs> he needs this stuff more than I do. <laughs> okay, so I want to finish this anecdote. There's new lights. Um. Uh, so you have all these incel freaks commenting on your Instagram. Oh you don't have to call them that, but I will. I, I would not call them that. No, you wouldn't. These potential school shooters. If you're, if you're watching, <laughs> that is not me. It's him. Think of them as some kind of weirdo without social awareness who are idiots. Uh, I'm also talking about your trolls. You won't even take a shot at your trolls. He, he didn't even take a shot at Hitler or Harvey Weinstein. He's not <laughs> yeah. going to take a shot at his <laughs> this trolls. This Justin Strauss that... like adores his trolls. I don't mind my trolls. They're paying attention. That's true. That's they true. Do like the, and they like the games. Yeah. They, that's, they love them so much the they're prices. mad at you they that they're love, not coming they out the game, enough. so they have a point of view. What is the end of your anecdote? So, <laughs> my dad <laughs> posts like normal, oftentimes I would say dad stuff on his Instagram, like wholesome. It's a lot of like group photos of cycling trips and we do a ski trip group photo. And on your anniversary with mom, you posted, <laughs> I, I love you uh, more than yesterday and less than tomorrow. And it was a sweet old picture of yeah, you and mom. True, and then, and then there's a troll in the comments that wrote, <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't want to fuck your tiny chode. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember I that comment. It. it was so funny, <laughs> and I just I love it because you, you just you try know to... he's just a guy that wants GTA Six to come out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's, and he's so like, mad. Maybe this will get to him. I, I wasn't mad though. No, you weren't mad. Well, you don't even remember. But it's no, I mean, you know, the <laughs> troll is so mad, and it's so I mean, funny. Can you imagine who that person is? That they are paying attention to my Instagram feed in the first place. That they are paying attention to this picture. And then they have time to come up with that comment and post it. Yeah. Yeah. What is that person well, I don't doing? Think the time spent coming up with the comment was too large of an amount. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that was, that I think it was the first time. Tiny dick? No, dick is yeah, too... Yeah, exactly. They're dick is not the wider than it is long. What is the, what is the, most, the most pithy way to make this <laughs> yeah. Should I I'm say she doesn't quite like your chode? Enough. But chode yeah. implies it's big. That might be a compliment. Doesn't like yeah, your oh exactly. tiny choke. <laughs> <laughs> so what are they doing when they're not doing that? I don't know. Uh, People playing your games. Oh, yeah, Pro- so. probably Spending time on four chan. I mean, um, maybe. I would imagine attending the Unite the Right rally yeah. in Charlottesville. Ooh, yeah. Editing I Andrew. Know. T- I don't know. I don't think it's a political thing. Okay, you don't. It's certainly a loser thing, which also the Unite I the Right mean, rally was. I, I think yes. that there's this weird thing going on, which is when people are online, they feel like mm. they're. 
they can say stuff they would never, never otherwise say. It's like people driving in cars and like flipping the bird at someone who, if they weren't in a car, they would never yeah. they wouldn't yeah. go up to someone yes. in a supermarket and flip the bird at them. Yep. But somehow you're in a car and it's okay. Yes. It, no, I, no one would say that to you. Like if he were right. to your face, he'd probably go, Strauss, Mr. <laughs> Zelnick, it's so nice to meet exactly. you. Exactly. He wouldn't yeah. say like, your tiny toad. <laughs> yeah. It's so to nice to meet you. Or, or and your toad is so cool. That would be yeah. crazy. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's autistic. So occasionally oh, wow. I... And your driver but putting his thing. hand over... Occasionally <laughs> I respond to people <laughs> like this. Occasionally. Yeah. Well, you what do you say to it? And I, I will occasionally respond depending on how bad it is. I only respond to the DMs, not to the... Oh, okay. And I'll, I'll get a DM where someone like really goes off on me in a really ugly way. Um, do you ever get anti? This is a serious question. Do you ever get anti-Semitic? No, no. Really? No. Oh. But I, I get some really ugly stuff, and I will actually respond and say, "Listen, I am a real person responding to you. Wow. And I have feelings. Wow. And I don't know who explained to you that it was okay to uh, interact with people in this way, but <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. You're, you're being the father that. that they certainly don't have. And you know what? A hundred percent of the time, people they, respond they, and say. They you back know what? off, right? You're right. I'm really? so sorry. Yeah. Thank you for responding. <laughs> and I only wrote because I really care about your game. Because I'm yeah. all out of virtual currency. And, uh, and I was wondering if you could refill. No, I mean, but I, I, I don't have time yeah. to respond to all of them that way. So usually I just do the delete thing. Yeah. And then the block thing. Um, but occasionally. Wow. Well, that's the thing is they just want attention. So if you do give them attention. But right, I will, well, I you will realize respond like that. Yes, the dad thing. It's like who. And by the way, in fairness, like who did say to you it's okay to. Yeah. To do that. Yeah. It's not okay. Yeah. No. But you realize you do, like, you still, because I have responded. I, the last time I responded to, tro to trolls, did I just tell this story on the pod? I feel like I did. That I had that really heartfelt TikTok response when I was drunk. Some guy, like, was like, you keep getting less funny or something. Yeah. And I, but you can't curse in the TikTok comments because it'll just filter your comment out and it won't tell you. Oh, right. So I'd be like, it, it really stinks when you, <laughs> when you say stuff like this. Like, it causes me to take fewer risks on stage. And it's a real bummer. And I work my butt off to put all these videos out for you for free. And then I, like, I went to bed drunk. And, like, all these, you forget about the power dynamic that you have as the responder. And all like first of all, it's the guy being like, "I'm so sorry, I love your stuff. I just like want you to be great." And then like all these other people being like, "You're so raw for that king." And I was like, "This is the most embarrassing thing." I was like, "I wish I just had never." And then I never responded to a comment again. I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like responding. Yeah. Do you have uh, like people that can get you addresses of people, and then you can just post their address? So, <laughs> do you ever dox? So your, I don't do anything. The like consumers that. of your company. <laughs> but, but could I do something like yeah. that? Yes, you'd be amazed at what I could. Like do. pretty quickly. <laughs> well, you, you have. You security. would be astonished. <laughs> yeah, what I could do. But no, I don't do it. Do you, should we okay. do the? You want to do the Nilda thing on here? <laughs> no, definitely no, not. No. Okay. How about, Wait, well, how now, how about with, that, with those kids who uh, like. Uh, Threatened to beat you up in the club, that, those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, in the club. Yeah. Oh, no, they did beat me up. Because yeah, of you? <laughs> no, I just got... I, no, I got no, punched in the face, me. and then my dad was, like, really pissed about it, and he I wanted me I was not happy. To, he oh. wanted me to, like... Press charges. No, he no? wanted to send... I was send, going to take care of it myself. He wanted, like... <laughs> he wanted to get, like, vigilante justice and No, 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 that's such an overstatement. He wanted to send I a scary to guy to give him a scary sentence. I, I don't know, that's an overstatement. No, I wanted no. to make sure that they understood they shouldn't have done it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just wanted to make their Achilles go up I just wanted to make sure. You, you talk like the president yeah. in such vague aphorisms I was sick of their sinister. nose being dead center in their face. No, I just... I wanted, I wanted to slide to all the way that down. that a really bad plan wanted to wanted time to a radiator. Yeah. Make them but he but, wouldn't let me do it. But yeah. I wouldn't let you do it because here's the thing: is at, I was talking shit to that guy, and he hit me in the face. And the, you were the, talking shit to him? Me? A shit talker? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in a. I've, I told this on stage one time. I was in a. Uh, I was in B Bar, which is uh, used to be like a big intern bar in New York City. It actually closed down. It's on Fourth Street. Like sounds like an oxymoron. On a big or, intern, but interns don't have any money to. Spend at a bar. I know. Well, it was like That's a place why where I all closed. I guess like yeah. we're a big intern bar. <laughs> I think, it... and then they're like. We have no income. Oh, uh, damn. We're a homeless yeah, well, no also, like, it was We're a homeless French, French no restaurant. <laughs> it was for people with fake IDs. It was for like rich kids with fake Got IDs. It. So okay. that we did have money, but it was illegal what they were doing. I see. And, we, and it would always be packed. And uh, I was talking to some guy's girlfriend. I didn't know that it was his girlfriend. And then he came up and was like, that's my girlfriend. And I said, uh, <laughs> I said, cool it, spiky hair guy. <laughs> you said that? Yeah, because he had spiky hair. Oh, so you and left that part out when you told me the story. Wow. Yeah, well, probably not at that time. He and almost then... had someone go to his house and shoot him in the head. <laughs> and you started it with the spiky hair guy. He almost had him executed from that, yeah. point blank range. No, and then he... Um, 
punched me directly in the face immediately, <laughs> wow. dropped my ass, and then he ran out of the bar. So he like uh. sucker punched me. And was he uh, bigger than you? What? Uh, he was like a His very hair was bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> including hair or without the hair. Uh, but he was like one of those jacked, wide little guy. He was like a oh, short a dude little, with a, he was a short king. But he was but he was jacked. You know those yeah. solid guys. Like, yeah, yeah. I always yeah. I would give I would take a solid five eight guy over me in a fight most days because you're solid now. I mean, I'm jacked to you're the nines. You're pretty jacked but now. A, you, you've made it pretty jacked because my dad's on the pod, really. Well, compared no, to your I'm dad, you're a little there. squirt. <laughs> yeah, but you. <laughs> it is funny to being just 28 I'm, years old and being way smaller. Just a pipsqueak <laughs> next to my dad. God damn it. Looking like a child. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling like a child now. Yeah. Anyway, he hit me in the face. I got up. He was gone. And I told you about it. Yeah, you were mad, which I appreciated. But yeah, I. Listen, do you mind if I change the subject? Because you could tell that story on a different pod, but I do really want to ask Strauss some questions. Of course. So and we, Strauss, we have a finite amount of time. So Strauss, you grew up... We, yeah, we only have like 10 minutes left. Here, let me ask I'm, mine. Surfing or skateboarding? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. Okay, next. What's your favorite Pokemon, Strauss? <laughs> have you ever tried to do a backflip? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the most childish question. <laughs> What's the biggest weight? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't try to lift heavy weights. Okay. Um, so Can you beatbox? <laughs> No. <laughs> break dance? We're doing no. a lightning no. round. <laughs> Already. Um, wait, I, have a, I actually have a, I have a real question. So you grew up with not too much money, right? Right. So when I am assuming out of after... not too little. Not too little. We're definitely... We'd middle class. Yeah, upper, so I mean, you weren't... Upper middle class. You weren't r r what you are now. Rich. You can say rich. No, I, I didn't. We didn't live the way we live now. Yeah. So... Uh, what is that transition like? Do you remember much of like, mm. how does it change your consciousness and the way you're interacting with things in the world? That does a, it? That's a really good question. Do you have to be mindful of it? I not mean, I, to? I don't feel like I've changed at all in that way. I think people do. Um, I'm really grateful for what I have every day. I, I don't take any of it for granted. And I don't think that I'm a better person because, you know, I have means as opposed to someone who doesn't have means, as Lucas knows it. But that is true, but also I don't think you could ever ask that question to a rich guy and have him be like, yeah, it just changed me. No, I don't. No, it's different. I'm <laughs> I, I think some people would say, like, <laughs> just, look, it's a, that's not, when you have the ability to do things, it does feel different than when you don't. And I'm glad that I do. Like, I was one of the things I wanted, and I'm, as I said, I'm grateful that I have it. But I don't think it's changed me as an individual. But to your question, it is a really great question. Yes, like life definitely changed when I had meaningful. I don't meals. know if it's changed you, but have you ever had to fly commercially in coach <laughs> recently? And if you did, <laughs> Actually, what yeah, might yeah. you say to a close friend when you were done with that experience? I for sure have <laughs> flown. I have for sure flown commercially coach within the last nine months. Uh, really? Yes, yeah. absolutely. How short a flight? Relatively short flights, but I mean, there are flights where coach is the only class, and I've flown the class available. Well, it's not even like a like a rich person like thing that's bad. It's bad for everyone. You know, for what rich I mean? people to fly. Yeah, coach? that's no, a bad experience for literally even like, poor people. I was just on. Someone a, I just got said three hours of sleep because there was just a big guy next to me, and his arm was off. Someone just said that Spirit <laughs> Airlines tried to get clear um, approval yeah. for planes that you stood in, yes. so they get <laughs> no more way. people. Yes. yes, that's what I heard. Like I, cattle. Yeah. That's actually so like, funny. You yeah. just stand like cattle. You ever in the drive plane. past those cars that have the cows yeah, in the back? Yeah, yeah. we're going back to your roots here. Yeah. Anyway, what was the question? Have you been in North Dakota before, Jamie? You didn't ask your question. Or was that the question? So. So it's Good like question. when specifically around the time you're I'm assuming it's when you're graduating from Harvard and you get your first job, oh, definitely you start did. to make real money. No, I didn't. No, no. I wasn't making real money at all. But you were no, the director first, of real yeah, money no, at no. Vestron so, president. Or well, I guess president. what's real money to yeah, you? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is my, yeah, you know, I'll tell you, my first job at Columbia Pictures. Now, in fairness, it's 1983. I got paid fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Oh, oh, so oh, now, that's not the. That even... was a lot more in 1983 than it is today. But today, that'd be the equivalent to maybe ninety thousand dollars. Okay. So not nothing, but barely enough to live nicely in New York City. On yeah, like, yeah. You know, I had you know, it wasn't like I had a big apartment or anything. I had a fifth floor walk up. And you were married at this point, right? I was not. Yeah. So, uh, no, the, you don't make a lot of money in junior jobs in the media and entertainment business. They're oh. not high paying jobs. You know that. So when you start <laughs> yeah, you, you work at a junior level in the entertainment business. So do you, John, and but so I, do I. I mean I it took me before I started making like significant amount of money, 
it was, yeah, when I became president of Astron was the first high paying job. And, but then you, it's not like you have money because you're just beginning to earn yeah. it. Like, yeah. And you pay yeah. taxes. And like, I still had student loans until I was 30. Um, Two so. years out from being the CEO of 20th Century Fox. Yeah, but even then, yeah. like, yeah, it was a high paying job. But, but it wasn't like CEO. I'd saved much president. money. I'd save some money. And I was always a good saver. But it's not like that makes you extraordinarily wealthy. Did you, is there one purchase you can point to and be like, that was a mistake? Oh. When you started getting money. Oh, you mean like early, like, was like there a, a first, silly purchase? Yeah, like, like, like your a first crazy, rich guy like, purchase. why did I do that? A not meal really. even, it wasn't no? wasn't really my, my nature. Yeah, I don't yeah. see that with you. What about a car? You're, you such, a nice you're so car? level-headed. When you lived in LA and you were a studio head, you must have had a nice car. You got a nice <clears> car? I did. I had, I had a Porsche. You had a Porsche. Yeah. Was that the nice car at that time? Like, was there a fuck you option that you chose, you opted out of? Like a... Rolls Royce or something. A tank. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> An actual <laughs> tank from the U.S. military. A no, but I had like I had like Trojan the, horse. I had the uncool Porsche. I had the 944 in those days. I didn't have the 911. Your mom had 911. Because she was just a rich kid. Until it got stolen. <laughs> My mom and I have so much in common in that we've never really worked for anything. So she had the 911. <laughs> I had the 944. Wait, your mom was rich before? My mom is a <clears throat> Canadian heiress. I don't know. Cool. What's the consolidation That's of a, a self-made conversation <laughs> stopper right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There doesn't seem to be any follow-up questions from that. One. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, I so, mom, what was that like? Well, no, it's just, my, no, it's funny because <laughs> mom would always say that she didn't know she had money. Yeah, she would say. And we'd be like, "Well, what about <laughs> so when you were boarding your private jet, honey? You didn't know." And she was like, "No, I, I did not know." I thought well, everyone I don't know. lived but that way. You were no, flying it's... on a private jet that you knew belonged to your dad. You didn't think that meant you had money? No, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know if she told you this at all, but she thought she was talking to Lucas when I went on the road with him, and she was talking about uh, sitting in coach on a flight, and she was like, it was the worst. And then I was like, hi, Mrs. Zelnick. And then she went, how long has he been in there? She got really mad I was like, I'm sorry. She gets mad when she, other people who are poor, like John, hear <laughs> poor. how we talk <laughs> behind closed doors. It is a thing. Yeah, okay. The poor the collective. My dad just asking if poor people exist. I, is that I a mean, thing? The poor is a thing. No, no, the poor is a thing. How big are their <laughs> private jets? <laughs> they have the oh, my oh my word. They, they only have shares. <laughs> <laughs> they can only are... do net jets on, on their own. It's horrible. <laughs> Thank you. It's horrible. Um, wait, uh, but uh, did you ever stop? So when you get hired to this big job, the 20th Century Fox is probably the first like big, big, because you were getting promoted at Vestron. And it was still a sort of boutique company, right? It didn't feel as big. It it felt pretty big when I became president. Of it the did. Company. Well, question yeah. about that: How did you get? How did you get that? Did yeah, you just, like work because your I worked way up? for someone who believed in giving young people with no experience opportunities. Mm. That's oh. real. The, the truth. He was a guy named a white Austin supremacist, first, and he just believed that. He could identify talent, which he could, and he would prefer to give someone who is, you know, young and energetic an opportunity as opposed to someone older and more experienced. Huh, do, do those people still exist? Uh, do people who do that exist? Yeah. I still, I mean, I, I was going to say, do you do that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I do. But it's rare. It's much more rare now. It is. I mean, the days where you get hired in the way that I got hired to go to Fox, uh, those days are over. Yes. Like really? no one ever. Wait, why is that? Because, I mean, I got hired because I had a one-hour breakfast with uh, the chairman of the studio, and then I had a one-hour meeting. Who is that, Peter Chernin? No, it was Joe Roth. Okay. And I had a one-hour meeting with Rupert Murdoch and Barry Diller and got hired after the meeting. That just doesn't happen. People do, like, assessments and background checks and many interviews. and Background checks. Know. They couldn't find your myriad of felonies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> background but, checks. They listen to every podcast so you've ever was, done. So you'd be good. out But on also, that. look, you know, in those days, you could also get fired like that. Like if you you know if things didn't go well, you also could get ushered out, out of the premises that quickly. Oh, absolutely. Huh? Interesting. So, why? Know, why is it in those days? It was just a different culture. It was a rough and tumble sort of. It was just the end of sort of the rough and tumble old movie days, and it was the beginning of professional management entering that business. Uh, interesting. So you know, it was I had a bunch of friends from business school who entered the media and entertainment business at that time, and it really changed. But you know. It, it, it was still a holdover of the 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, it, it was it, like the you got something, kid. It was a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Not, not not entirely. I mean, you wouldn't describe Barry Diller or Rupert Murdoch that way at all. They're both very professional managers. However, the business was still, you know, a little more seat of the pants. Mm. And now that it's not and it's failing, do you think <laughs> that part of why it was so successful is that uh, that energy? No, uh -oh, I fuck. do not. I think that energy reflected the fact that um, it was a growth business 
and today it's not a growth business for an array of reasons. Because of TikTok. Well, I mean, in games. a nutshell, yes, right? In, yeah. in a nutshell, because digital media has expanded all the, the entertainment options. And in those days, you, you, there were gatekeepers between consumers and professional entertainment. And this is a great example. Here you are creating your own podcast, and you could have millions of people watch it. Yeah. You, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> you, could. you won't under you any could. circumstances. <laughs> not. It could happen. <laughs> yes. And that couldn't happen when I was in the movie business. The only way to get to consumers was through one of these big entities. What was your favorite movie that you ever greenlit? And well, I want to be cognizant of your time because we are uh, yeah, We're approaching nearly, the end. We are at 4 we p.m. Go a few more minutes. Okay. Right? But, favorite uh, movie you greenlit? Well, the favorite movie that I, I was involved with was one of the least successful movies I was involved with, mm. which was um, Hoffa um, starring Jack Nicholson. And um, it was a great, I think to this day, a superb movie, but it just didn't resonate when we put it out. And that's unusual. Usually if you make something great, people come out for it. Um, but I, and I was very intimately involved with that film for an array of reasons, not the least because it had a lot of problems along the way. Was it about a biopic about Jimmy yeah, Hoffa? Yeah, about yeah, Jimmy well, Hoffa. An, a, an imagined one because you know there's parts. No that one knows. No one knows. But who huh. killed Jimmy Hoffa? And it wasn't my dad. Now, <laughs> it was great, great movie. Worth it seeing. Was, it was his goons. <laughs> worth seeing. None of you has probably even seen it, but it's worth seeing. I haven't. It seen is it. weird that Jimmy Hoffa died one week after punching me in the face at B Bar. <laughs> <laughs> but but he did have spiky hair, <laughs> and he had very very, very spiky, spiky hair. hair. I, okay, this is a question I want to ask you because. Listen, we're all uh, comedians, right? And we, some of us um, are, um, well, all of us are, have seen some success. And, um, and I feel like we're constantly every comic I know it just walks around complaining and is upset and anxious about how it's so hard and maybe we won't make it and feeling insecure. Comics are really positive in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, you obviously had good things happening in your career, big things happening. Did you have opportunities where you were very cognizant mm. of stopping and taking the wins as they came? Or were you very anxious? Like the second you got hired for Fox, mm. you're like, fuck, well, then I might just get fired or I'm not going to do a good job. So I just have to buckle down and be really good and work even harder. Did you stop along the way and really appreciate the success? Not as much as I should have. I was much oh. more in the latter place. Always anxious about whether I would be able to deliver and anxious about what would come next. Do you think part of why you're successful is that? Or do you think that's just... I used to think the part of why I was successful was that, and I've come to the view that that probably stood in the way of greater success, mm. feeling anxious and insecure and wondering when the next big win is, <coughs> excuse me, is probably inconsistent with the next success. <coughs> wow. So I think, I think when I became a bit more confident, um, I actually did better, not worse. Mm. Do you wow. meditate? Hear that, Jamie? Uh, I don't really meditate. I have a spiritual <laughs> practice, but I don't meditate. What, I think what spiritual practice? That's where I pray in the mornings. Oh. So it's sort of like meditation. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't do either. <laughs> so next week, <laughs> we're going to have... Maybe <laughs> <laughs> next week, <laughs> my dad will be on, and he'll tell us Is not to get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my, my you can see the on. difference in how we were raised. <laughs> yeah, what are, what are your <laughs> politics, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie's dad is... Not not get <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a conspiracy theorist. He's in, insane. He doesn't really kid. believe we landed on the moon totally. Really? Yeah. Do you ever see any conspiracies online and go, oh, they finally figured it out? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's exactly no, what a member of the Illuminati right would on. say. <laughs> they got us. Chewing on hit it right on the head. <laughs> Can't yeah, no, no, no. He, there is no documentary. Really yeah, yeah. Wow, it is it. funny, though. Yeah. What other conspiracy theories does he believe? He believes that in our lifetime, we should, we should stock up on... Like like kind of doomsday prepping. He believes a solar flare will take out all of our communication devices, and it will. as well as all of our electronics. So we will lose power like an EMT, but global. That could happen. Does he really? It think could that? happen. Yeah, but Does he, he really, really believes it will. It, if it happens, like the amount of supplies you can have in your basement aren't going to carry you very far. No, no. that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. So like all the doomsday kits basically preserve your life for like Two twelve weeks. hours, maybe yeah. you know, maybe a little more. So like then what? I'd well, rather just get taken out with the big flare. Agreed. No, but two weeks. Two weeks of going around. around. Like, it's been really good while I was here. Like, <laughs> I, what? I'm gonna live now, like, like you know, 
crawling around in caves with my backpack on. I'm sorry. If, if I called, can, <laughs> I I, do if I called Doomsday, theory. I would take that 12 hours and be like, I told you. <laughs> exactly. I told you. You thought it was crazy. <laughs> I would drink that last water. Yeah. I'd walk around with my flare and my little bandage, and I'd be like, I fucking told you. Exactly. I told you my little you solid have meal kick. Yeah. 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 And by the way, you're a liberal. And yes, the Jews probably did control the media before the solar flare. <laughs> and then you would, you would have your shirt off on a mountain trying to fight the solar yeah, flare. Yeah, exactly. Bring it! <laughs> do you think you the Jews control the media? The I do think, I mean, here's control, what I think. No one controls anything. What? No one controls anything. I mean, if you get away. Well, but, controls. Do, but don't the Jews, but don't we, and I don't say this as, I love Jews. Audiences control the media because audiences create clicks and clicks get people paid. Mm -hmm. And what gets people paid is what they pursue. And, and the media business huh. pursues what is economically viable. And people viable. that see those stats, Jews. So, just have basically, <laughs> so yeah. basically the consumers ultimately vote. Now, yeah. if you're asking who's employed in the media business, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of Jews yeah. in the media business. But controlling <laughs> something and being employed in something are two really different Take things. Take Two's next game, Chaim Goes <laughs> West, is coming out soon. So. Strauss Zelnick, CEO of Take Two, states that he's not a fan of Hitler <laughs> and also refuses to condemn Weinstein Strauss in a wide ranging <laughs> interview in which he also states Jews are widely employed in media. Well, they Strauss, are. Zelnick, also, Strauss also, Zelnick feels the same way about Adolf Hitler as I feel about Taylor Swift, which is to say, not a fan. <laughs> Just not a fan. What were you going to say, John? So, yeah. It doesn't matter. No, John, go off. John, go off. Let's end this Wrap us up. Let's John. end right. this episode with, with a your with childlike. A Joy and wonder. All right, I'd say we all talk about what the moral of this podcast. Is. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, John, you say, summarize. I think the moral is yeah. um, sometimes you just have to go to a place that's very dirty to talk to <laughs> people that are different. You're not that different, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, you're my dad, so <laughs> I'm not different. Not to so him. different no, at all. Now, now, what would, what would your not different at all. What do you think the moral of the, the podcast? moil of the podcast <laughs> the <moil> is going <laughs> to come on <laughs> next week to circumcise John? But today, the moral of the podcast. What would I say? The moral is, I would say, well, I know your outlook pretty well. I think you've expressed it well on this podcast when we've given you enough airtime to. But um, I think you know you're uh, very lucky. You're grateful for that. You uh You know what sucks? What about this? What? Is it sucks to meet someone who's more successful than you and there's uh they have a better vibe. <laughs> they have it. a way better outlook. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you go, Well, I hope that's not why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I but hope those things aren't related. Oh fuck, he likes living. But God also I, I will say my response to your <laughs> thing about whether being insecure and unconfident uh helped or hurt. I think there's a crossover period, but I also think you have a certain degree of confirmation bias where you're now in this great place and you do have the luxury of relaxing a lot. But had you been younger and overly confident or just secure and it had, hadn't caused you to freak out and be neurotic and the drive your work, like have, drive you to have a neurotic work ethic at a certain point of juniority. I think that actually, like, there's a level of being junior where you have to be neurotic and push and push and push and push and yeah, not let go. I still go. do that. I still do that. So, I, I mean, I think the question is, are you carrying around this huge bundle of anxiety or are you working hard? Yeah. But I, I think you're right. There was a period of time mm -hmm. where you know, I was pushed more negatively than I am today. Yes. But I still have moments that feel that way, too. Mm. Most people do, I think. Do you have good relationships with a lot of people in your life? Almost everyone. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. will everyone at this table be, Jamie dead, in five years? After Speed I, round, after and I we'll die. wrap up the pot. Well, oh, how on earth would I know? Well, you've gotten to know us all a bit. Me, give us, pretty, give well. Us <laughs> pretty well. Me, pretty well. Give us goals that we can each achieve. Oh. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, wait. Well, if, I'd need to know your goals. If no, 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 no. If you're our manager yes. of our comedy career, you're the CEO of our comedy careers. What is your five-year projection? All right, so here's the case key by thing. Case. As someone who spends, I'll be dead. Spends a lot of time with people having these kinds of conversations. As Lucas knows, I wouldn't presume to know without sitting down and hearing what you want and what you're prepared to work for. I'd like to and be it, dead. You, I think you probably will be. That's horrible. There we go. But I, you know, it, it, having if I sat with you for 45 minutes and had the opportunity really to listen to you, then I could make a pretty good. My projection. dad, after forty-five minutes, okay, I actually one, think Jamie's going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> like or legit. Bored, or he nailed bored. it. But I, one thing, one thing is sort of um, offsets that, which is you've chosen really risky careers, and so that's much harder to predict. There is an element of serendipity. I chose a really risky career, and I got lucky on more than one occasion. So for you all, for like, if you had chosen to be lawyers, like just work hard and be a good lawyer, you probably do just fine, right? Mm -hmm. But 
to be a really successful performing artist, you know, there's a certain amount. Yes, work hard, be funny, like really hustle. You've increased your odds, but still some magic has to happen. Yeah. So you no had one, doubt about no me making honest. it. What's that? You had doubt. How, where is your doubt moved on my the Well, I have to talk about you. What? Yeah. Because I know you better. Yeah, yeah. So, so go, do Fuck, mine. We, we, do you think I'll make it? What, where was your doubt? And then we can wrap. We have, do to, you end have, to, we have to end on this. I have yeah. to end on this. So uh, what, this is the truth. In the beginning, I thought, and I told people this. Yeah. Because I spent my life and spent my life working with talent that I thought uh, you had a A plus hustle and B plus talent. And to be a big huh. star, you need to have A plus hustle and A plus talent. And I wasn't sure you had A plus talent. And then I saw how hard you worked and I saw your material and saw and how you were doing. Now. And I would say, <laughs> and I would say my current assessment is you got about A minus, which means you still got two grades to go. But he also and improved his grade. He did, which I'm not sure I thought was possible. Yep. So still has A plus yeah. hustle. Probably about A minus talent and material. Get your material and your talent to an A plus, and then you'll be really successful. And then maybe you'll be second in your class. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, second in the class that you guys are in would be pretty good. Yeah. And as it yeah. turns out, second in my class was pretty good. We're yeah. out okay. Who, who's the, where's the guy who finished so first? He, I think he actually <laughs> killed he, himself. He was really smart. <laughs> He's obviously, dead. I think he was a mathematician, and I'm pretty sure he won Jeopardy a couple of times. Okay. I don't actually know what he did. Oh, that's career. I so think he sad. Maybe, oh my God, is that really what he is? No, he, no, that wasn't. He's like, like the a Jeopardy. Okay. No, that wasn't the only thing. And now he's a troll on my dad's no, no, Instagram. No, I think <laughs> he's turned out to be. He's turned out to be very, very successful. Okay, good, yeah. because that would have made me really sad. I think he did something more serious. Like I think he may like be a math, like Nobel laureate or something i don't know so he's like uh walter white he's like and then you're the guy that owns gray matter <laughs> <laughs> all right well, let's all right that. uh, <laughs> uh strauss selnick my father dad thank you so much for coming thank on you so i love you coming on. and we appreciate you taking your time with thanks us we really do everybody. appreciate it thanks for having me i'm not gonna shake your head <laughs> i don't know